This is Hartenbauer, the king of spears, and you guys are watching Drinking at Moe's. All right, everybody, welcome to Drinking at Moe's. Host Big Mo here. Be sure YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, helps the show. We're on Apple, Google, Spotify, Anchor. We're everywhere. Today I have with me Mike Hardenbauer. How the hell are you doing? I am doing great, Mo. How are you? Can't complain. I got tomorrow off. My wife and I are going to Luke Combs for about, I've lost count of how many damn times, but you know what? I don't mind his music. He makes, and his music makes my wife happy. So happy wife, happy life. I love that. I love that. I'm actually going to a concert as well tomorrow. Uh, completely out of the blue. Just happened like an hour or two ago. Uh, Panic at the Disco. Oh, not a huge fan, but somebody asked me to go and I'm like, hell yeah, let's go. Hey, why not? And Correct me if I'm wrong before we get going into some of the questions I have. Panic at the Disco. Wasn't he the lead singer, the guy that I'm forgetting if he was on Jimmy Kimmel or one of them late night talk shows where he did, he covered the DuckTales theme song. I could have sworn it was. I don't know. I could have sworn it was him. I'll have to go look that up because I want to. I want to say it's uh, Brent, Brendan, Brendan Yuri. I, I'm I'm one to say that's who it was because I knew the amount that I've heard of their music, and then I hear him singing that song. I'm like, that's him, ain't it? Probably. So who knows? Anyways, first question I like to lead off with everybody is: What got you started as a fan? And then what got you started, you know, making the jump into the business? Um, I feel like I was late on both of those. Um, I really didn't start watching wrestling until I was like mm, 11 or 12. So I guess like not too late, but I just feel like a lot of people like, they're like, oh, I was six or seven years old and I saw this and I was like hooked. And I'm like, I just, I guess I don't have any memory of that. So um my first memories are, are like attitude era, um, mm. you know, Monday night wars and that kind of stuff. Um, I'm 35 years old. So I'm, I definitely, you know, gave away my age there, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, those were pretty much my first, uh, memories. Like the first WrestleMania that I remember seeing, um, was WrestleMania 14. Mm. Uh, and then I feel like a lot of people, um, around my age have a similar story of loving wrestling and then getting out of it as they, you know, kind of, you know, you go to high school or you go to college and you just kind of, you know, get, get away from that a little bit. Um, and then especially like that time in wrestling, like 2002, mm -hmm. three, four, like it just kind of started to just not become as, as entertaining for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, so then to answer the second part of that question, I got into the business again at a late age, um, you know, comparably speaking, um, uh, I was like 25, 26 and I was going to, I went to a few um, local shows, uh, local indies in town and I just remember watching and I went for like the names um, cause I'm a big nerd mm -hmm. and you know, I, um, it, it just, it kind of hooked me in. It was like, man, this is what I wanted to do. You know, this is what I wanted to be when I was a kid. And um, I would go to after parties and talk to some of the guys and I had, you know, I had a few beers in me. So I'm like, Oh yeah, I want to wrestle. I was never <laughs> like that. So, you know, we run into fans all the time. They're like, let's arm wrestle. And it's like, I don't want to arm wrestle you or, you know, like stuff like that, like, you know, whatever. But, you know, I was having like genuine conversations with some of these guys and they're like, Hey, if, you know, if you ever want to come train with us sometime, you know, we train here, we train there, we train this time, that time. 
Um, and it never quite, you know, I'd wake up the next morning and be like, Oh man, I really want to do that. But you know, I have, you know, my, my life and work and all of that kind of, um, disallowed me, um, to do that at the time. And then I went to a seminar, um, with, um, Prince, uh, Mustafa Ali mm. and, um, from there i was pretty hooked I, I liked the feeling of like like taking the bumps and all of that and the physicality of it mm. um but even like the first like six seven years that that i was in the business i didn't i wasn't able to i, I treated it like more of a i don't want to say a hobby but um kind of the last the last two mm. years i've really been able to 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 focus on wrestling and make it my main priority that's good. I mean, I kind of like you, you mentioned, you know, like a lot of people having, you know, kind of grown up a little bit, you know, being into it. And then I definitely slid away from it around that time, you know, when uh, it was basically WWE was only the big name, the only big name in the freaking crowd at the time. Right. And, you know, the competition aspect wasn't there. And then, funny enough, and I've been lucky enough to actually get a talk to both of these guys for the show, the two guys that ran the promotion that was my first ever independent wrestling promotion that I went to when I was stationed in San Diego, and then I just got hooked again, you know, getting the you know, when you grow up and you don't really know much else besides, you know, WWE, WCW, that sort of thing. And you're right. thinking, man, sitting ringside, you're going to have to be paying an arm and a leg. And then I go to some of those first independent shows and, man, like maybe 20 bucks at the most. And I'm sitting like... Right right by the ring and i'm like holy shit this is awesome well and and the thing too is um and now don't get me wrong there's a lot of um there's a lot of bad wrestling out there um <laughs> but when it's done right like at mm -hmm. its core it's really not rocket science um and and a lot of times like if you go to like really good independence it's not different than what you see on tv yeah, because a lot of people like they'll be like, "Well, I'm not going to that. That's not WWE, or that's." And then I'll tell people to come to some of the shows that that I'm on, and they'll 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 be like, "Okay, cool, we'll give it a shot." And then they come there and they're like, "That was the most fun I've ever had." You know, yeah. that, that's like exactly what we saw on TV. Like, oh, I can't believe you guys did that. I can't, you know. And it's just like, yeah. um, you know, that's what I always tell people. I'm like, ah, give it a chance, you know. Oh, yeah, no, I'm definitely right there with you because, like, I've definitely had my share of those people that are like, oh, that that's like the WWE type wrestling. I'm like, yeah, just, you know, somewhat smaller scale, but, you know, you go to some of them and you know, right. they, they, with the production value in some of them, they put on a damn good show. Oh, like, yeah. you got promotions out you know, towards Chicago with, uh, you know, freelance and Dreamwave, and which we'll talk about them in a little bit. You got a uh, Warrior Wrestling that I got invited when they're in St. Louis, and then oh, coming back out this way, you know, you have uh, Wrestling Revolver that they kind of, unless it's WrestleMania weekend, they tend to flip flop between Ohio and Des Moines. And right amazing shows i was at their tales from the ring this last time and who boy so like and that's, and that's the thing too it's it's like especially that roster there um <clears throat> like these are all guys that have been on tv or mm -hmm. are currently on tv um and like you said you're getting tickets for 20 25 dollars like it's you know that that's the and again not every indie is like that yeah um but um you know you can definitely tell you know some of them set themselves apart from others that that is true 
Next question that I had on my list here for my notes is everybody has their origins for like their in-ring persona. Like you have Stone Cold Steve Austin, how we talked about, uh, oh, his, I guess his now ex-wife was talking about drinking uh, his like tea or something before it got Stone Cold as he's watching a right serial killer documentary and it's like boom <clears throat> stone cold steve austin there that as a lot of people know kind of skyrocketed from there what right. is kind of like how did you come up with your you know in-ring persona um <clears throat> uh, you know i've mentioned this a few times recently but like it's it's cliche but you always hear like that it's not everybody can just like you know they can't just you know you're given a character and then hey go be this character um yeah. because not everybody's a great actor so you know like that old cliche of like the the easiest way to find yourself in the ring is to just be yourself with the volume you know turned up um, yeah. so i think over the years you know um I would try, you know, try to be like a pro wrestler, try to be like, now I am a pro wrestler. Now I am like what you see in the ring. Like, that's me. Like, you know, I, I, a very stone cold ish. Uh, and, you know, I, I drink a lot of beer. I, um, mm. can be a loud, you know, arrogant, you know, whatever. Um, you know, back in the day I was known to, start fights and um you know I, I'm, I'm much calmer and more relaxed these days um but um i shouldn't say that I, i'm still a little high strung but you know I, I think my days of yelling in bars and you know people like oh boy here we go that kind of stuff i think that's over with i keep that um you know in between uh you know in between the ropes but um, gotcha. you know i think that's kind of you know, just, okay, be yourself, you know, just yeah. turn yourself into a character, of course, but, um, and then you pull from different, um, yeah. you know, like if you, if you watch, you know, w whether it's, you know, depending on the company that it's in, um, you know, from a, from a chronological order, you'll see me kind of pull mm. from, you know, your Stone Cold Steve Austin's, your Kevin Nash, um, you, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. A little the triple h in there um but um yeah i think maybe a mixture of all of that and then you know of course just being myself with the volume turned up oh yeah yeah no those like you, you mentioned you know it can be seen as kind of cliche when you know talking about it because it is really said a lot when asking that question about you know, the best ones are just that person outside of the ring just amped up. Yep, exactly. And, you know, good Lord, we brought up Stone Cold a few times. I'm like, he he is very much that way from what he says. And oh, yeah, I'm like, I've had people joke with me about, oh, man, you should have him on. And I'm like, yeah. if I why ever, did not think of that? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, one, why didn't I think of that? And two, if if I ever got him on, one, I would literally cry. <laughs> and two, I would have to really get past this. And I've said this about if I ever got to meet him. I don't get starstruck that often or that easily. If I ever got to meet him, I don't know if I'd be able to get a word out. I, right. I'm just saying it. He I built him up so much over the years. I I don't know. Right. Yeah, there's definitely a few of those like, you know, when I when I was growing up, like I now I appreciate like technical wrestling and um you know, that kind of stuff, but when I was a kid, I I didn't care. I you know, I I you know, I, I liked the larger than life characters and that kind of stuff. And now really, you know, there's 
like people talk about like like famous wrestlers well there's a lot of famous pro wrestlers but like in general like there's really only so many of those larger than life like you might you might not know pro wrestling you know whatever but you know who hulk hogan is you know yeah. who the rock is and then most people don't even know that dwayne johnson was a pro wrestler anymore you know <laughs> yeah. um, he's still a larger than life you know person and you know rick flair um john cena like i like you know like the undertaker uh brock lesnar like those kinds of guys are legitimately famous people that can't walk through an airport without being you know recognized um yeah but yeah i mean i've met quite a few you know of the of those guys over the years but yeah i, I i've never met stone cold steve austin but i i would love to have a beer with him um, I think I'd probably be able to get out some words, but yeah, you're right. That meeting him would be a definitely an experience. Oh yeah. No, it, with a little liquid encouragement, I think I might right. be able to get <laughs> right, but completely sober. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> definitely not. But we, we talked about some of those big names and everybody's had their, where they got started and, you know, some, independent promotions i mean john cena got its start where is it I, i'm forgetting the damn promotion but everybody got their their start in different promotions not just jumping straight to wwe or wcw right. or whatever some of the promotions that you know doing my homework for the episode one that jumped out that i almost forgot about because i've had a little bit of experience with them Full, no longer running, fully loaded wrestling out of North Dakota. I, one time when they were doing a show up in Fargo, they said, you know, since I was making the drive from Omaha up to Fargo by myself, they asked if I wanted to be a special guest ring announcer for my friend's match. So I'm like, um, you're getting to tell me that I get to be in the ring with a microphone. Yes. So, but uh, what was some of your memories from Fully Loaded? Because I saw some pretty decent matches from those those couple of years there. Uh, thank you. Um, because, yeah, um, Fully Loaded was, like, the first place that I, like, those were my first, like, long road trips in wrestling. Um. <clears throat> met a lot of like great people people that i'm still friends with today up there that was like 2016 2017 um i actually i had a really fun time going up there like me and you know like my closest friends in wrestling would make those drives and did you know depending on where it was at like if it was fargo you're talking like nine and a half ten hours but like some of those other places yeah. uh, like why not and and uh yeah. Williston, they ran that whole state. <laughs> yeah. So, like, some of those drives would get to be, like, 15, 16 hours. Um, so, like, I have a lot of fond memories of, of that. But then specifically, um, the company, I had a really good time there. Um, and it was a really good mix of, um, you know, veterans and then local guys. Um, um, and they always took care of us in the locker room. I remember that. Um, that was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. I remember the I only ever got to go to the one show because, I mean, I couldn't make some of those drives up to Minot by myself. It was, a, it was it was a hike. I don't know if I got those drives in me anymore. I'm like, I'll drive like an hour and a half or two hours away and I get out of the car and I'm like, oh, God, I'm so stiff. Like it's I'll wrestle like five matches and I'm fine. But like a two hour drive anymore, and I'm just like, oh mm. man, back, you know. I still remember the one that I got to go to. I, I was trying to remember. Think that it, those were usually two night shows, and I remember first night it was uh, oh, one of the big matches was. Uh, Warhorse and his tag team that he was in at the time versus Eric Cannon and the now Ruby Soho in a, like a street fight. 
And I remember being at the after party and having drinks with Cannon and Ruby Soho and the likes. And I'm like, just thinking back on it. And I'm like, holy shit. That was pretty fucking cool. Right. That, and that's like, I was not at that show, but, um, um, and Cannon is a good buddy of mine. Um, and I know me and Warhorse drove, um, made one of those drives together. Um, yeah, that it was, it was fun. And that, and that kind of goes back to my point too, about, you know, those tickets were like $15 and yeah. And you, and obviously like Cannon has been all over the world and all over the independence for 20 years. Um, yeah. you know, and, and, and Ruby has, has been everywhere as well. Yeah. Um, especially, you know, obviously you've seen her on WWE, AEW, but you know, back then, you know, she was already like a big independent name, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, it's, you just don't know who you're going to see. And I think that's part of the, um, of the allure of, of some of these, these independences, especially even like the smaller ones. Um, yeah. you know, like I'm, I'm really proud of, of my body of work the last year or so at, um, Zawa, which, ah, yeah. um, a North central Illinois company, um, just about an hour away from me. Um, <clears throat> but, um, you know, you just like the fans that come there, they're so like passionate and, and you just don't, you, they, they love everyone. The guys that work, you know, you know, seldom the guys that are trying to do it every, every week and every yeah. weekend, all that. And you just, you don't know who you're going to see there. That's, I think oh, yeah. that's about it. Yeah. That, that is one cool mm-hmm. thing about a lot of independent promotions out there that, uh, yeah, you never know when they're going to, bring in a big name like i know around here mike bennett's been to omaha like twice this year and oh he was he was at the last revolver show in des moines and good lord you know you get out to some of the bigger cities like chicago and stuff and they're able to bring in some of those bigger names a little more frequently, but still you never know, which right. it, it's kind of right. like, hmm, kind of makes you think maybe I don't want to miss some of these shows. Exactly. And, you just and, never know. Yeah. It was, it was announced today. Um, all right. Maybe yesterday. Um, I will be fighting Mike Bennett uh, in uh, November, the day after Thanksgiving. Nice. That yeah. is, that'll be awesome. I, I've ran into him three times this within the last like half a year or something. And in Des Moines, I was, I remember joking with him. I'm like, we got to quit running into each other like this. But uh, you, br- you brought up uh, being proud of your work there at Zawa. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're still the current champ there, aren't you? Yes. Um, probably around 435, 440 days there. Dang, that's impressive. You know, you don't see, I mean, especially on the national TV scales, but, you know, even on the independence, you don't see reigns of that longevity that often. Uh, no, you definitely don't. Um, so like, yeah, like I said, it, it's definitely something that I'm, that I'm proud of. Um, you know, I'm, I'm legitimately proud of, of that whole promotion, um, you know, just from the top to the bottom. Cause I see how hard a lot of the people there work and, um, and I know like that fan base really appreciates it. I, and I bet. And uh, another promotion that, you know, one that kind of, led me to like hmm i think i want to get this guy on because i've seen a a poster for dream wave where you were going to be facing a good buddy of mine buns of steel jay fowler that that was like hmm that's going to be interesting i joke with him about man 
his buns are packed like Lex Luger's forearm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, that was um, just a few weeks back, um, which was our um, second show. Dreamwave is my home promotion. Uh, it was where I started. Um, they ran about 100 shows between um, 2009 and 2016. And a lot of times with indies, it's like, how, you know, how long can you go? Or what else yeah. is there to do? And obviously... You know, people have things come up in life and you because um, it's, you know, for, for the fans, a lot of times it's this three hour escape. But, you know, when you're, you know, booking flights and, you yeah. know, booking matches and talent and, um, you know, a lot of that stuff, along with having a full time job, along with having, you know, like kids and all and life and everything, it's, um, you know, so. So the promoter there kind of, um, who I'm very close with, um, you know, uh, kind of decided, okay, we've had a great run, you know, whatever. Um, and then there was a reunion show in 2019. Um, and I, and, and as far as I know, the plan was to kind of come back and do, uh, quarterly shows. Um, but then the pandemic kind of derailed all of that. Um, and, um, you know, without going into too much detail, um, um, you know, decided to, to come back and, um, uh, we ran a show in August and then, uh, just a few weeks back, um, and yeah, me and Fowler beat the hell out of each other and it was a lot of fun and, uh, we will be having another show December 10th. Hmm? Uh, then Columbus and LaSalle. Ooh. And, well, ho- we'll be sure to post links up in the description so hopefully people can, uh, you know, go keep an eye on that one. I know I sure will be. Uh, oh, yeah. Fowler and I, we've been buddies for a good little bit. I remember meeting him when he was still wrestling under a mask. And I think I was one of the few at the time uh, just fans that actually saw him without the mask before i don't know anything about this mask but now i gotta ask him about it um when i first came up i was wearing a mask too (laughs) um (laughs) there was a um a recurring character at dreamwave uh named luther um or like this like slipknot type mask with these Ah. like dreads and um you know it was it was one of those things where it's like oh man like hartenbauer you're not ready yet like let's <laughs> see if you know we got like a spot for you hey what you know, let's see if you can be you know be comfortable in front of a crowd um and i wasn't i was terrible but um it, it hid my flaws pretty well um so i wore that mask for probably like i did that role like maybe for Actually, it was probably for the better part of a year. Um, but, I mean, you're talking that's like eight, nine, ten shows. Yeah. And um, uh, before that, uh, several people had had played the character. And, I mean, I'm especially at this time, I was like 270 pounds, just not in great shape. And then the guy who did it before me was like 6'4", like, you know, three, four inches taller than me and like 70 pounds less than me. And everybody's like, Luther, Luther's in <laughs> bad shape or Luther's in good shape. What's... Oh man, Luther has a bunch of tattoos this month. What's going on? Yeah. Uh, but uh, oh, that's crazy. I had no idea that he wore a mask. I can't wait to ask him about that. Oh yeah, around here and up into, I believe even Des Moines for the longest time, he went under a mask and was known as a Superfly. Okay, all right. And then... Oh, it was, I forget how long ago it was, a couple of years ago now, I think he lost a, some, a match where his mask was on the line, and, you know, some people were like, oh, no, and I'm like, I've already seen him with the mask off, so. <laughs> yeah, he, he doesn't need a mask, he's got a pretty face. Yeah, yeah although we, we don't want to give him 
too much of a ego boost. <laughs> yeah, no, he doesn't need that. He doesn't need that. <laughs> I mean, it's not like he has a super huge ego anyways. He's a pretty right. pretty of solid course, dude. Of course. We'll, we'll knock him down a peg. I, I beat him. Uh, spoiler alert. I beat him a few weeks ago. There we go. I, I, I was going to... Yeah, knock it down a peg. I know. I I believe I actually saw pictures from that match. I'm like, oh damn, that looked intense. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. It was fun. We were. Uh, yeah, he knocked. He knocked me in the eye. My contact fell out. I had a black Ooh. eye. You can see it in some of those pictures, like already swelling up. I'm looking around the ring for my contact. It, it was. I couldn't see anything. Yeah, it was. It was fun. Oh no. Um, well, going on from there, um, you know, when I was thinking about this, I thought back to, uh, Cody Rhodes, when he first left WWE, he had that, that list, that bucket list of, I want to face this person, this yeah. person and so on. Um, would, what would you say are like some of the people and maybe places that if you had one of those that you'd put on there. Um, I actually do need to make a list like that. Um, I, um, this was the first year that I did like any sort of like, okay, I'm going to set some goals or I'm going to just write down like, Hey, this is some stuff that I want to accomplish this year. And, yeah. uh, and that was just like, that wasn't like specific matches or specific people or companies. Um, but I reached essentially all of those. So I'm really happy with that, but yeah, going into 2023, I, I plan on, you know, Hey, I want to work for this company. I want to work these, you know, you know, work with these people. Mm -hmm. Um, so off the top of my head, um, you know, the, the, the Mike Bennett match was a match that mm -hmm. I wanted for a long time. Um, so I'm glad that's getting to happen on, um, a really big indie stage. Um, uh, about five years ago, um, I had a match with Eddie Kingston. Um, I wasn't ready for that match at all. Mm. I think him and I were both in, in kind of strange places in life at that time, but I definitely was not ready for a match with Eddie Kingston. It was a good match. Um, yeah. honestly, I've watched it back a couple times. It's, it's fine. Um, it's just something that from a personal standpoint, I'd love to run it back. Um, yeah. um, I was just talking, um, about, uh, Steven Wolf, uh, yesterday, him and I had a match earlier this year. Um, I'd love to run that one back. Um, and then I'm trying to think, um, I guess I don't really have any, um, uh, you know, matches that I can think like off the top of my head, like stuff that's kind of out there where it's just like, um, but you know, the places that I work regularly, um, like AAW, um, I, I'd kind of love to work with Fred Yehi. Um, mm. I, that would be a, a really physical match, um, with you know kind of two styles that um could could go together really well um uh, God, i can't really think of anything like off the top of my head that's like oh okay that you know um i i had someone uh mention to me recently they're like you're just like darby allen and I was, i'm like i don't see any way in which I'm like Darby Allen, and they're like, Yeah, you too. I'm like, Okay, and then I got to thinking, I'm like, How would that match go? <laughs> I'm like, hmm. So, but I guess, like, if I was making a list, I probably wouldn't put Darby Allen on it, but I, I mean, <laughs> other, um, other people want to see it apparently. Um, hmm. but yeah, I think mainly just like having good matches, telling good stories, um. And, you know, if, like working with my friends and that kind of stuff. Um, those are the things that I kind of more focus on than like the name itself or the name themselves. Yeah. Um, well, understandable. Company wise. Um, I'm, you know, I don't really have like anywhere specific that I, I, you know, um, you know, being out where you're at, you know, Magnum, um, you know, I, I've, I've spoken with, um, with strife a couple times and I know he's busy and has, you know, all kinds of 
stuff going on. Um, so I'd love to come out there. Um, uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, a couple places like, you know, in, in, uh, Wisconsin that I'd like to work, um, or, or at least, you know, go back to, um, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, I worked at uh, freelance in like 2017. Um, I wouldn't mind getting back there for a match one day. Um, but yeah, really, I mean, it's just kind of, um, you know, hitting some new States and promotions yeah. and that stuff. And, and really you kind of have to do your research, you know, because it's, there's only so many really big independent companies, but it's like indie wrestling is everywhere. Like there's companies in Illinois that I haven't, I've never heard of, yeah. um, you know, it, so it's like, well, you know, I'd like to get back down to Texas. I went down there for WrestleMania weekend. Um, you know, I'd like to get to like Michigan, um, Georgia, um, out, you know, out, out West, like Arizona. I know there, like, I have some friends that work at, you know, kind of all these locations yeah. and then I have like friends that live in these places where it's like, Oh, I'd have somewhere to stay or yeah. you know, just, just like, you know, just to kind of travel a little bit more. Um, so I guess, I don't know if that answers your question, but no, uh, wasn't perfect. too specific, but I, I guess I just don't really, you know, I'm just kind of taking things day by day and kind of living it. No, nothing wrong with that. I know, you know, I have some people out West that, you know, they said with a lot of the events that are going to be coming out there with uh, mania and all that, that it's like, mm -hmm. dude, dude, you should come out here. I mean, you would, all you'd have to do is get a plane ticket and you're like, event tickets and stuff and i'm like hell oh, you're you're driving a hard bargain there man right but you yeah, know I forgot mania is out in la yeah uh, yeah that's that's a hike i like to drive so for me mm. that's like a 26 hour drive probably yeah so it's like well i could break the ride up you know but i'd have to take you know i mean i'd be taking a week off of work and, and you know that kind of stuff um so I was thinking I probably wasn't going to do Mania weekend or week, but um, literally in my head right now, I'm thinking, well, why not? <laughs> yeah, but, no, uh, I, I, know I, I, I know they're in Philly uh, in 2024, yeah. so I'm definitely going to be out there for that. that. That'll be interesting. I've only ever flown through Philly, but I have done the drive from out west to here back when my enlistment was ending i did break up the drive but i kind of went and i did like pretty much the entire california coast up into oregon and then back down because i had friends along the coast nice. yeah i think i only made it about eight hours at a time until yeah. i was like okay next next exit that has a hotel i am stopping yeah, that's that's the way to do it. I've always been like super reckless over the years, and I'll just drive straight through, and it's just uh, it's the worst. I like stop at a rest stop and sleep for like 20, 30 minutes. It's 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 <laughs> rough. Oh yeah, but you know, hopefully, hopefully someday I'll be back out that way. I know I've had plenty of invitations to come out there, so who knows. Um, one thing I like to do with each of my guests is, you know, allowing people to get to know them outside of wrestling. Like, what is the day in the life like for you? Ooh, this is going to be boring. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I, I work a lot. Um, I wouldn't consider myself a workaholic. Someone probably would. Other people probably would, um, but I work, I go to the gym and that's like it, <laughs> it sounds yeah. terrible, but it's like, like I'll get to like the next like wrestling show or like, you know, it's just, yeah. um, yeah, it's, I, I mean, I don't know. I've been behaving lately, but I do tend to drink too much. Um, so like, you know, I'll go to a bar you know, throw some darts, sit at a bar and just watch a game or something. It's mm. God, so lame. Um, but yeah, I spend, like, I went to the gym twice today. 
Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, like, I'm not like a big TV guy. People will be like, oh, did you see this episode of Game Game of Thrones? I'm like, no, I, I didn't. Uh, they're like, oh, did you see this episode of that? And I'm like, no, I don't watch TV. I, like, I don't have cable. I, um, I listen to a lot of music. Mm. Uh, but I feel like, you know, that's like me just being in the gym, having like my, my headphones in or like, oh. you know, when I'm just sitting on my couch, like watching like music videos. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not a big movie guy. I'm not a big, um, yeah, like music and pretty much just like working out kind of lame. No, yeah, nothing wrong with that. You know, everybody, not everybody is, you know, super huge into TV and movies and all all yeah. that sort of stuff but i mean heck work and you know keeping yourself in shape for the wrestling shows can keep you quite busy i'd i'd imagine yeah i know i'm definitely busy like i don't have like a whole lot of free time um you know between work and wrestling and working out um so you know i yeah and like i i stay busy but it's just not very exciting so <laughs> <laughs> no totally understandable well i like to round off my episodes with two different categories first of them being a bit of a name game i name off some people that i try to tailor it to the guests where like you've shared the ring with them in one way or another whether facing off against them or tagging with them and you give me your thoughts on it. sure oh boy this could <laughs> okay <laughs> you got me nervous I've, I've had some good ones, but uh, <laughs> first one, one that I was I had forgotten about, but I was quite excited because I think of both of these guys like brothers, Guns and Beer, Duke Cornell and Bo Gott. Yeah. Okay. Um, so our paths. So like like Guns and Beer, it made perfect sense like years ago to do guns and beer versus spears and beers which was a tag team that i was mm. in uh, at dreamwave and we did, it just never came to fruition um but then um got to work with duke um quite a bit out at fully loaded um drank some beers together and uh i i want to say um we almost drowned each other in a hot tub during a match out there at fully loaded, which was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> and then um, I know um, Bo got was kind of out of the business for a little bit. Yeah. He, he, yeah. We had, um, I think he was, he was traveling with Fowler and mm. uh, we got to work together a little bit at Zawa and it was great. It was awesome working with him. Uh, and this was just, this was maybe just like five, six months ago. Mm. And, um, you know, afterwards he was like, Hey, that was like my first match or maybe I, it might've been first match or like first couple matches. One of them. And he was yeah. just like, Thank you so much. Like, just like that. Those are the, like the little things that like mean so much to me in wrestling. Um, great dude. And yeah. it, it looks like he's been, he's been killing it. Yeah. Those guys are awesome. Oh yeah, he's uh, Duke has been doing his thing. Not so much. Uh, haven't got to run into him as much lately, but got nothing but love for him. He was actually at my wedding, um, and Bo got. I was actually just with him this last Saturday, and I still think he was crazy for ever even wanting this type of match, but he always wanted a no rope barbed wire match and he finally had one this last saturday i think and i saw I, that in the socials yeah i did one of my uh little vlog things for a special one just for that match and you know it was kind of cool for me because i got to uh he had told me beforehand that he wanted to incorporate me into his entrance because he had asked me about getting him a grilling fork and <laughs> this was when the match was supposed to be against the carver mm -hmm. and i'm like okay so then yeah he acted like he was gonna walk by me and then have me tap 
him on the shoulder and then, you know, got it out of my backpack that I had my podcast stuff in. Everybody was like, holy shit. I love it. Oh, man. He was, and it, it was a pretty good match, but god damn, like intense stuff. But I still think those, anybody that wants to just volunteer for one of those is freaking somewhat insane. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I think a lot of us have, like, I don't know what it is, but there's some sort of uh, masochistic, like, I, I don't know what it is. But yeah, there's times where I'll be like, oh, yeah, I don't care. Like, yeah, it's, it's mm. weird. Wrestling's wild. It, it sure can be. And well, speaking of no rope barbed matches, one guy that I had next on the list that has been in a couple of them, Abyss. Okay. So what, what are your thoughts? Because I know I'm wanting to say it was fully loaded that you had a match a few years ago against him at like a tag match uh, uh first of all i love abyss i was not expecting you to bring him up even like at all I, I i had no idea where you were going with that i'm like i'm trying to think in my head i'm like huh who abyss is awesome um i want to say i first met him at dreamwave i could be wrong on that it might have been dreamwave or fully loaded i, I want to say it was dreamwave and just like and this isn't anything that hasn't been said a million times. The nicest person, maybe ever. Um, and uh, yeah, we did something out at Fully Loaded. I don't. Th I think maybe. I think he was working with Christian Rose, or maybe I don't know if I was. I was involved in it, but I don't know if I was actually in the match or not. Um, and I took a choke slam. I want to say it was a choke slam from him. And there was still a few leftover tacks in the ring. And one mm. of them just right into my ass. And I was like, ah. Um, oh, no. But, um, yeah, just um, just great. I know he works for WWE now. Yeah. Uh, so is not pretty much able to, to, to make any indie shows or anything like that. Um, but he did, he had a really nice run at Dreamwave, actually, like six or seven shows at least. And um, and then I had seen him in um, the AAW locker room when I first went there in like 2017. And just like so nice, like that you, you don't like, I mean, you, you meet a million people in wrestling and like, it's just human like nature to like, hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Hey. And like, sometimes you just, you're not able to, if you don't work with the person or if you're on different sides of the locker room, like your only interaction might be, Hey, how you doing? And it might not even be that. Um, yeah. You know, depending on when people get to the shows or when people leave the shows, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, Abyss just, Hey Mike, how you doing? Oh man. Like whether I'm in North Dakota or Chicago or whatever, he'd always bring up Dreamwave. Oh, he's like, oh, I'm coming to LaSalle. And he'd give me his dates. He's like, oh, I'll see you April 11th, like stuff like that. And just like, just a, just a great, great dude. I'm really, oh, yeah. I, like, you brought him up. <laughs> I was not expecting that at all. Yeah. I, I was doing my, doing some homework for the episode and trying to come up with some names for this category. And like, Abyss popped up and I'm like, okay, I'm adding him. It's awesome. But yeah, no, it's always nice when you meet some of those guys that have been on those national scales that like when they are that welcoming and that nice as he was to you there, it's like, wow, because you're always afraid of like, they always say not one I forget how it exactly goes, but not wanting to meet your heroes is right. you, know, you, you build them up so much. And then you never know if like, maybe it's just you catching them on a bad day right. or maybe that's just actually how they are, but you know, you meet them and they're a complete jackass. Right. And you know, it's always nice when you don't 
get that experience with them. Absolutely. Next one, a guy that I have met a few times and actually one of the last times was here in Omaha in a match against Bo Gott. Christian Rose. I was I was waiting for you to bring him up. Um, <laughs> God, we go back to literally my day one of learning how to run the ropes and take bumps and um yeah I, literally day one um and I, I can remember very vividly that first day of me doing some training and um one of the things that he said to me that sticks with me to this day is um that you know like pro wrestling it can it can be a lot of things for you um in you know, when you first get started, it can be um, um, an expensive hobby until it becomes a low paying job. <laughs> um, I'm finally to the point where it's a low paying job for me. <laughs> uh, and sometimes it's a lot better than others. Like some, some months it pays all my bills, which is fantastic. Um, but uh yeah, we go back to literally day one, have had a lot of ups and downs over the years, but I mean, you're talking the course of 10 years. Um, uh, we were friends pretty much immediately, and um, he had been living in Iowa when we first met, and um, I would um, at times be known to, um, to frequent some gentlemen's clubs and I, you know, I would go up there and, you know, and, and we would hang out and, um, but coming to Dreamwave every month, he, he, he loved coming here as far as I know. Oh, he must have because he moved to town. So him and I live, yeah. you know, 10 minutes away from each other. Um, we work together. Uh, we work out together. Um, and wrestling wise, we, we've, we've had some matches over the years, um, and have shared the ring together quite a bit. Yeah, like I can mention last time that I got to meet him here in Omaha, I'm I'm wanting to say it was a tag match. I might be wrong, but it was kind of an anything goes type of match. And Bo, every now and then, will like to incorporate me into little bits here and there, whether it's, you know, Oh, hey, I want you to hide this in your bag and you'll know, come <laughs> get it from you. Or this time they were brawling outside the ring. And before I know it, he is shoving Christian Rose into my lap and is telling me to hold his arms back. <laughs> so it's been it's been kind of kind of fun. And you know, I believe I'm wanting to say I also ran into him at fully loaded that one time that I Oh, yeah. was there, but yeah, yeah. no, I've had those drives. Had, like I said, they, you, you're in the car with somebody for 16 hours. Some of the stories, you know. Oh yeah, no, nope. I've and I've hung around some of the guys around here enough and heard plenty of the stories. Been at some after parties, sh- drink more than our fair share of beers and hearing some of those stories during those times. So, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, you know, the more they flow, the somewhat crazier some of the stories get. Yeah. Yeah. But um, next one, we kind of talked about him a little bit. Y'all kind of beat the crap out of each other a couple weeks back. Jay Fowler, Buns of Steel. Uh. Going back to Christian Rose, uh, I so I, I legit just met uh, Fowler um, probably like a year ago. No, well, it's probably closer to two years now. I don't know. Time is weird in wrestling. Yeah. Um, but um, I remember Rose telling me, he's like, you and Fowler, you guys are going to get along so well. Like, you guys are <laughs> – you guys are exactly alike you know i'm just like like, oh okay we'll see you know and we always joke about it like 
you know, Rose, Rose said that. And then like, we, I think we hung out one time and we were just like, yep, this guy's going to be my friend. <laughs> and, uh, and we talk every day, me and Fowler. And uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, we like to work out and we like to drink beer and we like pro wrestling. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and we did, and we beat the hell out of each other and, and, uh, and it was fun. <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome i've been around him plenty from when he brought up magnum from when they were at a little eagles club in council bluffs iowa clear up to now where they're at this spot only a few blocks from where i used to live here in omaha so we've known each other for a little bit um Last category that I have, I used to call it a bit of a speed round, but it never went that damn quickly. So I just called it a randomizer, random question round. Some of the questions might be wrestling related. Some might not be. You just answer how you see fit. Sure. All righty. First one, craziest in-match moment. Ooh. Um... I'm trying to think of like over the span of time. Um, um, but uh, most recently I was in a match with, um, with Nate Webb and mm. I got a chair in my hand and I turn around and he does like the RVD kind of kick mm. chair and the chair comes into my face. I'm like, huh, okay. I felt, you know, whatever. And I look on the ground and there's blood everywhere. Oh no. And I I look over at my manager, Bravo, and he goes, he's just like, oh, uh, just breathe. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, uh, I mean, I'm bleeding just profusely. And I'm just like, well, I don't know. That part of that chair clipped me, you know, and um just that like that like couple minutes of just like the ref being like, oh shit. And I'm just like, I'm fine. I'm good, you know. Yeah. Um, it's pretty, um, you know, pretty crazy, like in ring, um, and and it, and watching that match back, it added a lot to to the match. Um, um, but yeah, yeah, I can't really think of anything like too crazy other than other than that recently. Um, yeah. No, I. I would have to say that would be a pretty crazy one. I mean, I know I that is a question that I like to lead off this category with because I love hearing the different stories I hear. Like, and I mean, I've heard some crazy ones. Like, the guy's nose about getting ripped off in a match, and and, the guy, and that's the thing too is like you don't like accidents happen. Yeah, and you, you know, like, but you don't want to be on like this, like super family friendly show where it's all kids in the audience. And then you do something a little, not reckless, but like, like yeah. it could happen. And then you're just covered in blood and, and you know, you got kids crying and, and everything. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like, you know, like I said, it's not that crazy, but it, it happened at, at AAW. And uh, if it was going to happen anywhere, I'm glad that it happened there. Yeah, no. And that, that is true. You know, accidents happen and, you know, you'd, hope to be able to avoid them at some of the more uh, family friendly shows but i mean shit happens and you right. know the people like to kind of crap on wrestling about oh the, you know that's fake right and i'm like okay that's kind of one of the reasons i like asking that particular question because you hear moments about like yours about the like, guy get about getting his nose ripped off or right getting, shoulder separated and like listen to those stories and you tell me that they're faking that right yeah that's the thing like you'll have people be like well that's fake blood or that's fake yeah you know, it's like some of the stuff you just can't fake you can't you know like i don't love calling wrestling fake but you know i again this is this is all out in the public like it's 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 scripted it's uh yeah choreographed to an extent it's you know it's it's not like 
you know, you go to a play. It's that's yeah. not real. You go watch a movie. That's not real. It's um, but nobody's calling movies fake. That you know. Yeah. That's the thing. Like pro wrestlers, we're not sitting here saying, "Yeah, that's one hundred percent real." Yeah. You know, some people do, um, and it works. Um, but I think that's when you have that like that blurred line um, where you have people asking, you know, is is this real? Um, or wait, was that real? Like that kind of stuff is, yeah. You know, that's what's uh, something that's really cool in pro wrestling. Oh yeah, no, those are definitely some of the special moments where you you're wondering, like, okay, I know it's as I like to call it, I predetermined. There's a lot of this yeah. stuff that predetermined, but a lot of the damage, you know, you can't fake that. But there right. are those. The stuff that you can, air quotes, for the lack of a better way to put it, fake, um, when you're able to blur that line in between, okay, I know this is predetermined, but damn, they got me wondering about that one. Right. Those are some, when you're able to do that, yeah, no, definitely something special there. Um, Next one. What is a match type that you would like to avoid being in? If you could. Hmm. Well, uh, you know what? Honestly, I don't love ladder matches because I, I, I'm, I'm not afraid of heights, but I just like, like to stay grounded. Mm. Um, I actually, I have a TLC match coming up in like three weeks, <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess there's not really anything that I'm, you know, um, like, like triple threat matches aren't really like super fun to like structure, I guess. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I, ladder matches. I don't love them. I've been in several. Yeah, no, I can, I can, I can imagine because, I mean, some of the there's some parts of that ring that are sturdier than others, yeah. and when a lot, a lot can go wrong in a ladder match. Like I was in one just about a year ago, and um, we had two ladders, and they both broke. Ooh, what do you do? Now <laughs> you know what I mean. Now you're you're you got to climb up to grab whatever it was. And uh, now you have two broken ladders. Uh, One of them was like more broken than the other, but I thought they were both broken. So I'm in this building and I just remember like running to the back and like telling the building, I'm like, I need this ladder. And they're like, what? I'm like, I'm not going to break it. I promise. (laughs) (laughs) You know, like, just like, I don't know, like a lot can go wrong. And like, yeah, like you said, like parts of the ring, like they're sturdy and like you're climbing up there and just, I don't know, a lot can go wrong. Oh, yeah. You know, like we said, some parts of that ring a little sturdier than others. And right. one of them that, especially when you're trying to be on top of a ladder that isn't as sturdy as some is right there in the damn middle. And, you know, trying to, you know, keep your footing while the ladder's kind of, oh. <laughs> exactly. I can imagine not being fun at all. You know, Next one, everybody has their favorite beer, those that drink. What would you say, in your opinion, is one of the worst? Oh, okay. Um, I don't like Bush Lights. Like, for, like, popular, like, beers that I see, like, my friends drinking, like, yeah, I don't know. I just, I hate it. I just hate it. I don't know why. It, like, it doesn't taste terrible, but I feel like if if I had to open one, I better drink it, like, quick. Otherwise, it's just going to be, like, flat. Not flat. I don't think flat's the word, but, yeah. It, yeah, I just, I don't like Bush Lights. Like, there have been a couple times where, like, like, I don't really, I used to drink Miller Lite back in the day, like, w- like way, way back. And then, like, I've drank, like, Bud Light, and then I was a big Coors Light guy for a while. But the last, like, seven, eight years, I've been a Michelob Ultra guy. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, I've never really been like big into like IPAs. Um, so like essentially just like a light beer guy. Um, but yeah, my definitely my least favorite um, light beer would be Bush Lights. 
I'm, I'm going to make a lot of people mad when I say that because I know everybody loves Bush Light. But yeah, I mean, I don't hate it, but like if there were a more cheap beer that is like, okay, I just want to sit back and pound back a few, <laughs> that, w- that would probably be on my list of ones that I'd do. I personally, I can't, and I swear it just tastes like the beer flavored toilet water, but those uh, natties, those natural nice. lights, uh, those just, it literally tastes like they just, if you could f- beer flavor, uh, like toilet water, literally. I haven't, I haven't had like a natural light. May, I, I'm, I'm sure I have, but like, I can't quite recall. Um, I do know they did like those, like, like maybe like a pink lemonade, like the, the mm. Saturdays, the Natterdays. Yeah. Um, I've had a few of those the last couple summers and they're pretty decent. You know what? I'd be willing to give those a shot. Yeah. I can't say that I've ever actually gotten through and gotten any of them. I like to normally, if I'm the one buying them, stick to my, my favorites, my Exactly. Per- my personal favorite, I got hooked when I was in Hawaii and with the Navy and found out that they sold these pretty much around the country now. The Kona Big Wave. Love it. That is their long where that and their longboard. Kona Big Wave. Okay. I'll have to I'll have to look into it. I got a liquor store like two blocks away that has like hundreds of different beers nice that and their long the kona company's long board amazing i if i'm going and just getting a beer to enjoy for like a pay-per-view or something i'm like i'm grabbing myself some of those nice I'll but, to look um, at- oh yeah no and i mean illinois and st louis area they have some more availability than we do here because i've been curious about uh stone cold's beer i know he's got two of them now yeah but they sell neither of them here in nebraska yeah they're kind of hard to find i've had it before and then i um we were looking for it down in texas during mania week and couldn't couldn't we were just weren't having any luck but yeah it's pretty good yeah, no, you'd think Texas would be a place that you'd be able to find. <laughs> On every shelf, you'd think, yeah. Yeah. I, I haven't had the the uh, American Lager yet. I've had the IPA, but not, yeah. not that. Same. Um, last but not least on this round, best advice for anybody getting into wrestling? Um, have a positive attitude. Um, come in uh, with an open mind in shape um, like it, it took me forever like I've never been in like terrible terrible shape but like um, I, I always definitely say not to get in the business the way that I did I mean I was like 25 26 and like didn't go to like wrestling school um, find a reputable trainer go to a wrestling school um you know make connections that kind of stuff i i'm i consider myself to be a very lucky very very lucky person um doing more with less than so many people in in the business um very fortunate the connections that i've made over the years um but i feel like a lot of that has just been because i've been self-aware um but you know not everybody is going to be that lucky so yeah go to school get trained um you know that kind of stuff um but just really having an open mind and um just trying to be in the best shape possible that you can be because i know a lot of people will show up to their first day of wrestling school or show up to a seminar or show up to somebody's backyard to to train and they're in terrible shape and Mm -hmm it's impossible to work with. Um, you know, I'm not saying you got to be ready. Cause I, I mean, I'm in good shape, but like, 
I can't, I couldn't go run a marathon right now, you know? <laughs> um, so it's, you know, everybody's different of course, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it can be a really rewarding uh, business to get into. So I think as long as you keep an open mind and have a positive attitude, um, you can do a lot with it. Oh yeah. I mean, you mentioned finding reputable schools. I mean, depending on the part of the country that you live in, I mean, you might have to drive a few hours, but sure, there's plenty of reputable schools. I mean, here in the Midwest, you got uh, over there on the other side of Iowa from me, uh, the Black and Brave Academy, Seth Rollins and Merrick Brave School. I've been right. lucky enough to talk to Merrick Brave for the show. Very reputable school there. I mean, you go out west, you got Santino Brothers, you right. run by Joey Chaos, and you got a level up ran by B Boy over there. Um, East Coast, uh, the the SATs got their school that they're running now. That I mean, good lord, they've the amount of stuff that they've innovated. I mean, shit, they invented the damn Spanish fly, right. So, I mean, as long as you're doing your homework and, you know, doing your homework, doing your research, there's plenty of schools out there that, right. you know, if you're, if it's what you want to do, you're in good hands there. Right. And, and, you know, it doesn't always have to be like, I'm going to be a wrestler. Like there's plenty of auxiliary roles in, yeah. in this that like, I feel like a lot of times people will. You know, like you can get in the business, like, you know, and I referees like need to be trained, of course, but like, yeah. um, you know, like ring announcing, um, you know, ring crew, even, you know, like there, there's, there's jobs in pro wrestling. And that's, you know, I, I think sometimes a lot of people just think that they need to main event WrestleMania. Yeah. It doesn't always have to be that, you know? Um, so yeah, it's, Definitely important to do your research on, on who you're getting involved with in the business. Oh, definitely. Anyways, that is about all I have. I want to one, where can people find you as far as social media so they can get an eye on you at Zawa or Dreamwave or wherever it might be? Uh, yeah, Instagram uh, at mhartenbauer34, Twitter at mhartenbauer. Um, I'm on Facebook too. Um, but yeah, follow those companies, Dreamwave Wrestling, Zawa Wrestling, AAW Pro, Iron Spirit Pro, um, just some of the places that I've been working at quite a bit recently. Um, yeah. Well, like I said, we will get links in the description and basically last all i gotta say is thank you for taking the time to talk to me tonight thanks for having me